when you create a workbook with a large number of worksheets. It's very useful to create a worksheet with a list of all sheet names. You may call it a table of contents or an index. And then create a forward and backward navigation from the index to different worksheets and back. I'm Nabil Murad. There are three different ways of doing this, either by using functions, by using a VBA code, or by using Power Query. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below the video. Make sure you watch the three tutorials and let me know in a comment which method you find easier for you. In this tutorial, I'm using functions. You will find below this video links to the two other methods. The function I'm using is get.workbook. It's a macro language function that returns information about a workbook. It requires saving your file in a .xlsm format. The get.workbook has two arguments, type number, name text. The type number is a number that specifies what type of workbook information you want. Name text is the name of an open workbook. If name text is omitted, it is assumed to be the active workbook. Being a macro language function, we cannot use it in the worksheet directly. We use it in a defined name. If you use the type number 1, then it returns the names of all the sheets in the workbook as a horizontal array of text values. Names are returned as book name in square brackets followed by sheet name. To display the sheet name stored in the defined name, into our worksheet, we can use an index and a row function. To get rid of the workbook name, we use a replace function. And to avoid generating an error when copying our nested functions down, we use an if error function. I use the get.workbook macro function inside a defined name. To bring the list of sheet names into my summary sheet, I use the defined name inside an index function, which also requires a row function. To get rid of the file name, I put the index function inside the replace function. And to avoid errors, when we copy the index function beyond the total number of sheets, I put the bunch of functions inside an if error function. Let's now build it all in Excel. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file by clicking on the link below the video, and this file includes lots of worksheets. A simple method to look at the different worksheets available is to hover over the lower left corner on the navigation bar, and if you right-click, Excel will display a list of all the sheet names. I'm going to close and cancel because I would like to create in my index worksheet a list of all the sheet names and create a forward navigation to any worksheet and then a backward navigation to my index sheet. I start by creating a defined name and in this defined name I'll be using a macro language function. So I could go to the formulas tab and then click on define name. Alternatively, I use the shortcut Control alt f 3 and it opens the new name dialog box. I need to give it a name, so I type my sheets. You can use any other name. And then in the refers to box, I'll be typing my get.workbook function. So I type an equal sign, and then I type get.workbook. It's a macro language function which requires saving your file in a .xlsm format. So I'm going to open bracket and provide a number. I can provide a number from 1 to 38. Each number will be returning a different type of information from this workbook. When I type number 1, that means I need a list of the worksheets to be returned as a horizontal array of text values. When I hit OK, now I would have created my defined name. But in order to bring the list of sheet names into the workbook, I need to use an index function that will refer to the defined name I just created. So in cell A2, I'm typing my index function, equal index, and then I hit tab. The index function requires an array, so I type my sheets, which is the defined name that I just created, and then I hit comma. It requires a row number. 
I would like to extract the second value, which is the introduction worksheet. So if I type 2 and then close the bracket, look at this. It's returning the workbook name in square brackets, followed by introduction, which is the name of the second worksheet. But in order to make it dynamic, I'll put it in the edit mode. And I would like to replace the row number, the hard-coded row number, by a function that extracts an incremental number as I go down. I'm in row number 2, so if I use the row function, open bracket, close bracket, this part, if I select row number and hit F9, look at that, it's returning 2. Let's undo Control z that will be my index function, referring to the defined name using the row function to return an incremental number as I go down, and then when I hit enter, here is my row function. I can copy down, but look at that. Why in the world do I need the workbook name? I want to get rid of the workbook name. I want to replace the workbook name, so I want to edit my function and insert it in a replace function. Let's cut this part and recreate my function. I keep the equal sign and then I cut. I could keep it, but just to make it clear for you, I'll be typing a replace function. The replace function requires four arguments. The old text where you want to do the replacement and I'll be pasting my index function. And then comma, a starting number. Well, I want to start replacing from the very first character, so I type 1, and then I want to replace up to the closing bracket, so the next argument after hitting comma, how many characters? Well, I don't know how many characters, I just want to replace up to the closing square bracket, and to do this, I use a find function, so if I type find, and then the find function asks me, what would you like to find? Keep an eye on the screen tape. Find text, well, I want to find the closing square bracket. So I type a closing or a right square bracket in double quotes. This is what I want to find. And then I hit comma, where are you looking for it? I'm looking for it inside the result of my index function. And that will be the second argument of my find function. Now I'm back to the replace function. I provided the old text, the start number, the number of characters. All the find function is returning the number of characters. Let me check. If I select the argument in the screen tip and hit the F9 key, it's returning 50, so it will be replacing from 1 to 50. Don't forget, hit Control z We don't want to hard code this number into our function. And then I hit comma to move to the last argument of the replace function. When I replace from 1 to 50, what would you like to put instead? Then I want to put nothing, so I type double quote, double quote. This is how we write nothing in the middle of the function, and then I hit enter, and it returns the sheet name without the workbook name, thanks to the replace function that includes the index and row function. But you know what? If I copy this function down like this, and then I go to the last worksheet, that's the last worksheet. Did you watch? If I go beyond the last worksheet, then it's returning a reference error. I don't want to get this error when I go beyond the last worksheet. So what do I do? I need to edit my function one more time by hitting the F2 key, and then I'll include all this bunch of functions in an if error function. So I type at the very beginning, right after the equal sign, if error, and then I hit tab, and then I click to the very end, and then type a comma. What do you want to put if all this bunch of function is returning an error? I want to put nothing, double quote, double quote, and then close the bracket, and then I hit control enter to populate this function and I was able to get rid of the error value. Now let's adjust the column width. It's quiz time. I have a question for you. We can get the total number of worksheets in this workbook by using the same index function we created with the same defined name and just change the second argument with a number. Then putting it in a very simple and popular function. What will be the number, and what's the name of this popular function? If you know the answer, write it down in a comment. But now let's resume our tutorial. To build a forward navigation, you can use a hyperlink function to create link that goes to a cell somewhere within the current workbook. The hyperlink function requires two arguments, a link location, which means a destination, and optionally a friendly name. The link location must follow the pattern book name, sheet name in single quotations, 
an exclamation mark, there is cell reference. The trick is to add the pound sign at the start instead of the book name. While building this structure inside the hyperlink function, using the AND joining operator, SHIFT 7 on the keyboard. To create a backward navigation that jumps from any sheet back to cell A1 in the index of sheets, I use another hyperlink function. Now, let's do it in Excel. The second part of this project is to create a navigation, and to create a navigation, I'll be using a hyperlink function. The hyperlink function requires building a structure, a workbook name in square bracket, a sheet name, both of them included in single quotation, followed by an exclamation mark and a cell reference. That's the structure the hyperlink function is expecting. But the trick is to replace the workbook name with a pound sign, as I'm going to do right now, equal hyperlink. And then I hit tab, what's the link location? Let's build the structure. In double quotes, I'm going to type a number sign, and then I type the single quotation, and then I close the double quotation. Because I'm building a structure, so I want to join this part. I want to join it to whatever comes from my index function in cell A2, and then I'm going to join the sheet name coming from cell A2 to the final part that will deliver the structure to the hyperlink function, which is, in double quote, I need a single quotation, an exclamation mark, a cell reference A1, and then I close the double quotation. This is how I built the structure of my hyperlink function. When I hit enter, it's returning a hyperlink. If I click on this hyperlink, that should take me to the introduction worksheet. Click there, it takes me to the introduction worksheet. Let's go to the index worksheet. I don't have a backward navigation yet, and I want to improve the appearance of this function, so I put it in the edit mode one last time by hitting F2, and then before the closing bracket, I need to type a comma, and I'll be providing a friendly name, which is simply the worksheet name. Close the bracket, and now when I hit enter, here is the worksheet name. It's a hyperlink. If I double click and send it down, I would have created a forward navigation. For the backward navigation, I would like to create a hyperlink in cell A1 in each one of these worksheets that brings me back to the index worksheet. And instead of doing this one by one, I'm going to select all the worksheets simultaneously by clicking on the first one, Introduction, and then I want to go to the last one. I press the Shift key before clicking on the name of the last worksheet, the rightmost. So remember, I selected the leftmost, I pressed Shift and clicked on the rightmost. Now I'm in cell A1, I want to create my hyperlink. The worksheets are grouped together. What does it mean? It means whatever you do in one of the worksheets, you are doing it in all of them simultaneously, as if you are putting carbon paper between the different worksheets. So I start by creating my function, equal hyperlink, and then I hit Tab for the link location, now I'm going to type in double quotes as we did before, the number sign, a single quotation, and then double quotation. I want to join this to the name of the worksheet, so I type in double quotes, index, that's the name of the worksheet, and then it should be followed by a single quotation, and then an exclamation mark, cell A1, this is where I want to go my destination, and then close the double quotation. And to make sure that we are providing a user-friendly name, then I type a comma, and the second argument of the hyperlink function is friendly name, so in double quotes I'll be typing index, close the double quotation, close the bracket, and then hit enter. You would have created this function, the backward navigation, in all the worksheets. Let's check, so I right-click and say ungroup, now I have a backward navigation to the index worksheet from any one of the worksheets. Let's test one of them. If I click, let's say, on Network Days, then I have a backward navigation. If I click on Did You Watch, here you can see some of the interesting tutorials I have on my YouTube channel. You can check them at any time. If I click on Index, then you go back to the index worksheet. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumb up, 
And don't forget to watch the other tutorials for the other methods for creating a list of worksheets using VBA or using Power Query. Very interesting methods. Compare between them and let me know in a comment which method you prefer. You will find links to the other tutorials below this video. Don't forget to hit the big subscribe button to be notified when new tutorials are released. Thank you for watching and see you next time.